Grace unto you in peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. It was 30 years ago today, a Mayflower truck pulled up to 3030 11th Street in Monroe, Wisconsin. And tomorrow, that same truck stopped at 6700 South Howell Avenue in Oak Creek. We remember the date because tomorrow's my mother's birthday. And we always remember what day we moved here. What do you say after 30 years? Somebody has said, the main thing is to keep the main thing the main thing. <laughs> My first sermon emphasized Jesus Christ is our Savior. That's the message and the ministry. It's still the main thing, isn't it? You know, it, it can happen in individual lives, and it can happen in a congregation that you start to drift away from the main thing. And you may be still going through some motions, but the real emphasis is no longer, and the central reality is no longer the main thing. And my words of encouragement to you this evening, as we listen to the words of the Apostle Paul to the congregation in Colossae, are words that he was giving as encouragement to them. He didn't use these exact words, but that's kind of the theme behind those words. Keep the main thing. The main thing. The Apostle Paul wrote to this congregation these words. So then, just as you received Christ Jesus as Lord, continue to live in him, rooted and built up in him, strengthened in the faith as you were taught, and overflowing with thankfulness. He begins, so then just as you received Christ Jesus as Lord. He talks about them as having received Christ Jesus as Lord. They didn't take Christ Jesus. They didn't decide to bring Jesus into their life. They received him. It's kind of like somebody saying, they call another person up on the phone and their birthday and say, I received your gift that you sent. It was delivered by ups this morning. It was right on my porch. You, you just received it, didn't you? You didn't go anywhere to get it. You didn't do anything to purchase it. You just received it. That's what Martin Luther was emphasizing when he wrote in the explanation of the Apostles' Creed that we cannot by our own thinking or choosing believe in Jesus Christ our Lord nor come to him. We receive him by the power of the Holy Spirit. For the vast majority of us here, we received him in the waters of holy baptism as a little child. And what could be more obvious than a little child simply receiving those blessings? That little baby didn't do anything in order to get those blessings. The baby's just there receiving them being poured out upon that child through water and the word. And for those of you that became believers as adults, and there are a fair number of you that became believers as adults or returned to Christ Jesus, it was only as the gospel was heard and studied that that Holy Spirit led you to be receiving Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. 
he's writing to these people and he says, you know, in the past, you received Christ Jesus as Lord. This is the only time in all of Scripture where the Apostle Paul ties together those three titles or names. He says, Christ, the Messiah the promised one that God said he was going to send to redeem the world of their sin. Jesus, the one that they could all identify as that human being who walked here on this earth, their Savior. The Lord, the Almighty God, that eternal God that was here in flesh and blood. They had received, they came to believe that Jesus was that promised one. That he was their savior from sin, and more than that, he was the Lord of all things. And that had all simply been given to them. Now they've received it. And now he's talking about urging them onward in that. He says in the next words, continue to live in him. Continue emphasizes ongoing, doesn't it? Nonstop. Living, walking one's life in Jesus. He doesn't communicate a thought like, you know, sporadically. Remember Jesus and live a little bit of your life for him. Continue on in this, day in, day out, every hour of every day. Continue to have your journey of life in Jesus. Because of what he has done for you, you now live in him. How do we do that? Certainly it involves, start your day with prayer. Maybe it's just a short prayer. But start your day in prayer in the Lord. At some point during that day, and it may be at different spots for each one of us during that day, but take time to be reading his word. Use meditations that are available in the lobby. A good number of you get email devotions. Maybe it's all of them. But use that word. Because through the word, you will continue to walk in Jesus Christ. And that's what he is urging them to be doing in Colossae. That's what every congregation would be urged to be doing. That's what I would urge you to be doing. Continue to live in him. And then he goes on with another word. Rooted. Rooted certainly prompts us to think downward, doesn't it? You know, roots don't go up. Roots go down. And he's emphasizing, have your faith be deeply rooted in God's word. Isn't it amazing? A well-rooted tree... And the amount of wind force that a tree can withstand, it's just absolutely amazing. There's so much resistance there with all those leaves, high and wide in this great tree. And you can resi resist so much wind force because its roots are deep. You remember the parable Jesus told of the four different kinds of soil, right? Seed being spread on all four. One of them was an illustration of that soil where the ground was shallow and underneath it were rocks. The seed was planted, it grew up quickly, and then when the hot sun came, wilted and died. Didn't have deep roots. Jesus 
explained that he was talking about in that particular section people whose faith never went deeply, widely in God's word. And when some harshness of life suddenly entered in, when some deep difficulty they weren't bargaining on suddenly came to them, they didn't have the spiritual depth. They dried up and died, spiritually. He's encouraging them here. Have your roots go deep. Have them go wide. In God's word. Continue to live your life in Jesus. Rooted, and the next word he has, is built up. That takes us in the opposite direction, doesn't it? Let's continue to think about that in terms of a plant. Psalm 1 tells us that the believer who is using God's word is like a tree planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in season. That tree receiving the nourishment from its root system in God's word of water, of life, will bear fruit. Built up. And displaying that life of faith in Jesus Christ. Displaying a life of love. Of patience and understanding. Of trust in him in the circumstances of life. They've been built up and they're bearing fruit because their roots are rooted in God's word. You see, there's something totally contradictory, isn't there? If you have an understanding that there's really a good root system for a tree there, I mean, it's really wide and the tap root really goes deep and on top you got this little sprig of a thing. <laughs> There's something totally inconsistent here. And you know just as well that if you have this great tree with marvelous fruit appearing to be growing on it, but underneath it, you got about this much root, that's not really going to happen, is it? Both need to be there. And as the roots are in God's word, it will be built up. It will go upward in strength and demonstration of life. He's urging them. You've received Christ. Now continue to live your life in him and you do that by being more deeply rooted and more clearly displaying him in your life. And then he had the next phrase. Strengthened in the faith as you were taught. That word, strengthened, has the idea and the picture of reinforcing something. Making something more firm that might be coming a little wobbly with use. Boy, what an apt picture of faith, huh? Sometimes we need strengthening. We get a little wobbly. We need some reinforcing because we've suddenly been pushed a little hard in a certain direction of life. And that's what he's encouraging. That they would be strengthened in their faith. There may be particular aspects, situations where we need more of God's strength. You know what I'm going to say about how you get that strength, so I'm not going to say it. You know it. But it's all critical, isn't it? As he's writing to these people, he is urging them to continue along a pathway of growing faith and life and strength in Jesus Christ. And that all has a marvelous result. He said and overflowing with thankfulness. That's one of the most joyous things, isn't it? That the Christian life 
is a life of thankfulness. It's not some spiritual rat race where you got to reach some level of accomplishment in order to receive some blessings from God or to keep blessings. It's a life of thanksgiving. As you realize and remember and reinforced in what Jesus has done for you in his perfect life and innocent death, in his unalterable promises. And it leads us to a life of thanksgiving. It says, overflowing with thanks. Not just a little trickle. Not just a cup full. Overflowing. You know, we can never thank God enough. Can we? Not for what he's done. Not for what he's accomplished. Not for what he has promised us. Lives overflowing with thankfulness. And you see, when that's true, all of what we've just talked about, when that's true in the individual, then as those individuals gather together, that will be true for the gathering of believers as well. It will not be true for a gathering of believers if it's not true for the individual believers within that gathering. He's writing personally because he knows that it starts personally with people receiving and then growing and being strengthened and overflowing with thankfulness for Jesus and what he has done for them in their lives. After 30 years, I urge you to do what Paul urges this congregation to do. Remember what the main thing is. And keep the main thing, the main thing. Jesus, and what he has done for us, and being strengthened and renewed in him. And then a day like today is not goodbye, not even in an earthly sense, because we may see one another again here on earth. But it's not that way eternally either. I look forward to, first of all, being in heaven myself, as he strengthens and renews me. But I look forward to seeing you in heaven as he will strengthen and renew you in Jesus Christ and guard and keep you in his grace. Personally, corporately, keep the main thing, the main thing, and you'll be just fine. And your congregation will continue to be a source of light for each other, and for a community and world around us in Jesus Christ. Amen. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will keep your hearts and your minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen.